Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Weaver here in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen in San Diego, California, where cooking meets culture. I'm joined by Microwave Boy on the camera, Daisy the Golden Retriever, who has a new giraffe toy today, so she's very excited. And my very dear friend Kim Lutz is here via iPad. Hi Kim! Hi Stephanie, thank you so much for having me today. Absolutely, so Kim and I know each other through the food blogging and cookbook writing world. Kim is the author of this beautiful new cookbook, The Oat Milk Cookbook, and we're going to be talking all things oat milk today. And um, you have written, this is your sixth cookbook, so I'm so impressed. Good job. So really impressed when I looked up your stats. I was like, oh my gosh, this is book number six for her. Good job. Thank you so much. Yeah. I, it's a lot of fun to have a project. That's awesome. So uh, we're making today the, a dessert, so I'm super excited. Uh, caramel sauce and chocolate peanut butter nice cream, because this is an all plant-based cookbook. So I'm gonna get the, the caramel sauce on the stove. Uh, the recipes are, are being provided with the publisher's permission. So you'll see those in the comments after this runs live. And so we've got uh, brown sugar and a vegan buttery spread, and then a quarter cup of the oat milk. And I'm going to stir that real well and then put it on low on the stove. Is that right, Kim? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, and then so so you can. Did you want to show? Yes, I'm going to show the camera before I take it over there. So this is what it looks like before we start. So we've got the brown sugar, the oat milk, and a big nice uh, half cup of that vegan buttery spread. I'm going to put it on low heat, and then oops. Give it a real good stir before it really starts doing anything. But just so you're putting it into a cold pan and on low heat and you get it all stirred up really nicely. And then you're just kind of letting it cook for five or so minutes until it foams. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on it while Kim is talking. All right. I don't know if my burner actually turned on. Hang on. No, it did not turn on. So it's also always good to make sure your burner's on and you're not smelling gas. So that's a safety tip for all of you who didn't know that. <laughs> Hopefully everybody knows that. Yeah, so I'm getting just a really nice, um, you know, stirring that up real well. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna be watching for the sugar to melt and everything to kind of turn into delightful caramelness. Hey Kim, do you recommend I leave the spoon, the wooden spoon in the pot or take it out? Is there? I, I usually take it out. Take it out, okay, all right. So I'm gonna do that. I think I've got it stirred really well. I'm going to do a little loud tapping. Okay, great. So that's good. So you can come on back, my boy, boy. So Kim, tell us about oat milk. What makes it different than other plant-based milks? And why should people be interested in possibly using it? There are so many reasons why I love oat milk. Um, one of which is that it's really quick and easy that you can make it yourself at home. Um, if you have rolled oats in your cabinet, you can soak them, blend them with some filter, filtered water, and then strain it. I use a nut milk bag, but you can use a clean um, dish towel or any fine weaved fabric, and you can just strain out the pulp, and you have fresh oat milk that you can use immediately. So if you haven't planned your shopping well, or if you get a sudden craving, you can easily make oat milk and it is very affordable. Also, we, um, I live in a food allergy family. My son has um, food allergies, so I'm really sensitive to people who have special diet needs, which I know you um, follow special diet as well, Stephanie. Yes. And if you can tolerate oats, um, it can be a great substitute because a lot of people are allergic to cow's milk or intolerant to cow's milk. Um, same with nuts. So it's a nut-free, plant-based, affordable, easy to make, um, delicious alternative um, when you need a dairy substitute. Great, that's awesome. So I was just stirring, just checking in on the caramel sauce because I know I don't want my sugar to burn. So no. um, yeah, and so you had um, very early on in uh, your son's life, you found out he had a bunch of food allergies, and that's kind of how, isn't that how your family kind of started going down this road of special diets? Yeah, I was vegetarian for a long time before my son was born, um, but he was a baby 
when we found out that he was had multiple food allergies and so we had to I had to eliminate those foods from my diet as well because I was breastfeeding but we also then just started learning more and reading labels and I started cooking more and the more you see what's in other foods uh, the more that you become a more conscious consumer I think and that's what happened right yeah, and I think I've certainly known a lot of women who um, who's, who became sensitive, or their um, or that while they were pregnant, or their babies were sensitive to certain things, and so they had to like eliminate all cheese from their diet or things. And so, even people who aren't vegan or who or who aren't primarily eating plant based, there's lots of reasons why people end up needing some kind of special diet. So for myself. You know, when I found out, when I was finally diagnosed with migraines at age 53, which is like 30 years later than I probably should have been diagnosed, um, you know, I was eating a whole bunch of foods that I had no idea were triggers for me and were making my migraine pattern worse. I had already eliminated gluten because I have an inflammation issue, and sugar um, overall is not helpful for me to have in regular quantities. So, um, you know, it just it's not that those foods are evil or bad or anything, it's just that some people's bodies do better without them. And I've certainly, when I told people I was gonna be doing this show, I had so many people say, oh my gosh, I'm sensitive to dairy, I can't wait to hear about this. So I think it's really well-timed, and especially with all the, um, the, you know, the challenges around shopping and food shortages, it is great to know that you can make your own plant-based milk really easily through, um, through your recipe in the book. So um, while that's cooking, I just want to uh, show, um, so we've got such a range of uh, recipes here. So you've got a whole bunch of coffee, like coffee house drinks, because oat milk foams really well. Does it, it make really great cappuccinos, you said? Yeah, especially if you use like a barista blend brand of commercially prepared oat milk, then it works so beautifully. Awesome. You can definitely use homemade oat milk in your own coffee drinks, but if you really, like those kind of high-end um, fancy coffee drinks, then it's completely worth it to get a carton of the barista blends of the uh, oat milks. There's a bunch of different brands that make them, and they foam up so beautifully. Nice. So I have the Trader Joe's version. I don't know if that qualifies as barista or not, but <laughs> that's. I was like, oh, Trader Joe's has oat milk. Great. I'll, I'll pick it up for for the show. Um, and then we've, you've got baked goods, breakfast, lunch and dinner, soups, salads and sides, dips, sauces and spreads, and desserts, which is where we're going. But I also just wanna showcase like how pretty the book is. Um, it's just super pretty, and it's just a beautiful, Sterling Publisher does a really great job with these books, and so it's just very appealing. Uh, your, your writing is always super clear. Your instructions are always really easy to follow, so I always appreciate your work because um, you know you may I know you know the viewers don't know that I've reviewed over 100 cookbooks when my blog was at its really active point I was reviewing a cookbook every week and so I've kind of seen the good the bad and the ugly in terms of how cookbooks are written and produced and presented and so I always know that Kim's books are going to be really top-notch so that's why I'm especially happy to have you here and celebrate your brand new book it's very exciting Thank you so much. That's so nice what you said because I know that you have read a lot of books, so <laughs> I'm grateful for that. Okay, so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna bring this over to you to ask you: Do I need to raise the heat? I think you can see this. Do, do I need to raise the heat on this because it's not really? It hasn't okay. foamed. Yeah, it hasn't foamed. Am I, do I need to raise the heat to yeah, get it? Yeah, raise the heat a little bit. Okay. All right, and I'm just gonna show you all. Let's see. I don't want to pour it on the. So it's still a little bit thin, and I can still kind of see the granulation of the sugar, and I know we want that melted. So I have a tricky burner, because uh, it's one of those burners where it's either like really hot or very low, and so getting it kind of right is has been tricky. So and it will definitely thicken up as it cools, as it cools. so it'll yeah. still be relatively thin when okay. you, even once it foams and you add the vanilla and the okay. salt. Okay. All right. But it'll thicken up as it cools. But it definitely should foam. That's part of the. It should foam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna turn it up just a smidge, and then wait for a minute. Okay. So what are some of your favorite recipes in the book while we're waiting for the foaming? So 
the, one of my favorite recipes in the book is the vanilla cake. Mm. Making good vegan vanilla cake is a huge challenge, one that I've worked on for many years. <laughs> and the vanilla cake in the oat milk cookbook is consistently delicious. And we, my sister uses it as her go-to vanilla cake, and she's not vegan. Um, wow. So I think that that is a really, really great recipe to have. It's easy to pull together, and it is pretty flawless it works every time also I have kids so we eat a lot of mac and cheese in our house <laughs> um so those are those are a couple of our favorites though so I make a lot of the different you know a lot of the baked goods um just you know just I think they're all pretty good everything was tested pretty thoroughly and we got good results from a variety of different kinds of cooks and eaters which makes me feel more confident that everybody will like it. Yeah. So how do you develop your recipes? Where do you get the ideas for, like, how did this book come up about with the oat milk? Was it something that they came to you and said, we want to develop an oat milk cookbook, or you had the idea? How did that work? They came to me. Okay. So um, I do use a lot of oat milk, and I really like it, so it was an exciting project for me to work on. They thought that the time was right for a collection of recipes that used oat milk. Um, and so that's where the idea came from. Great. And then um, how do you develop your recipes? Like, do you lay out, okay, I want to have this many soups and this many, um, like, how does that work? Because I'm curious how other authors do that. So I could turn that light on. So I start thinking about the things that I want to eat. And then I start making those recipes first. Uh-huh. Like, I need to make dinner. What would be a good thing? I want my use oat milk. And um, so I start thinking about things that sound interesting and exciting and ideas that I have or flavor combination. And then I look to make sure that the book is balanced, that each section has enough recipes. So if I knew that I needed another soup, then I decided to put my mind to that. Okay, great. So it looks like we've got some foaming. Should it just be foaming around the edges or all the way across the top, Kim? Um, I would say it should be foaming kind of across the top. Okay. I think it's about there. I'm gonna. He's going to come over and we're going to take a look. So you can see we've got it around the edges and it's just about to kind of really start boiling. So, and this is where you don't want to, um, and so it actually will uh, increase in volume. That's when you say foaming, that's what you mean? Yeah, and it gets like kind of taller. Okay, yeah. So I can see that that's happening. I'm going to keep stirring it a little bit, and then I can tell that it's, yeah, I can feel that it's starting to thicken up a little bit. And I can also feel that, um, just that sort of chemical reaction that's going on. So I've got foam across the top, boiling around the edges. I'm going to turn the heat off and add the vanilla and the sea salt. And then we're just going to let that sit. Um, all right, I'm just going to move that off that hot burner. And then you said it thickens up as it cools, right? Yes, it definitely does. Okay, good. And then the last thing we're going to do, so I'm going to move this oat milk out of the way is we're going to make uh, nice cream. So tell us what nice cream is. So nice cream mm -hmm. is a plant-based ice cream that is made with frozen bananas as the base. Okay. And, and they're very creamy um, and versatile. You can add a variety of different flavors. So in the book, we have the chocolate peanut butter, but I also have like a pumpkin pie ice cream mm -hmm. um, because the base is very adaptable. Great. And it doesn't necessarily taste like banana ice cream, right? It does taste more vanilla-ish when you've made it? Right. It'll take on the flavors that you're adding to it. Okay. So the basic um, ice cream does have more of a banana flavor, but as you add other ingredients in, it's not so strong that those other ingredients and flavors, they shine. Great. So what I've got in here is two tablespoons of oat milk, two tablespoons of dark cocoa powder, and two tablespoons of peanut butter. And because I have experience putting powdered things into food processors, 
I'm mixing it a little bit before I put that in there because I really don't want that cocoa powder to just fly all over the inside of the, up around the edges. I've done this before, it's not fun. So I'm just kind of just moistening essentially the cocoa powder. And then we're gonna throw everything in the food processor and this, it happens pretty fast, right? This, this right. processing. So what I was sus suspecting, I haven't made this specific recipe, but I've made things like it, is that what you're listening for is the sound to change. So what'll happen is when I'm gonna grab the frozen bananas. And so my tip for bananas is I, I let them get super ripe, like more ripe than microwave boy thinks they should be, quite honestly. And he keeps asking me, are, are you gonna do some of those bananas? But I like to develop all the sugar in the bananas because I use them for smoothies and things like this. And then I cut them up and I lay them out on a cookie sheet covered either with a parchment paper or a silicone mat, freeze them, and then I bag them up. And that way they stay really fresh. They're pre-portioned. They're super easy then to make, um, you know, whatever you're gonna make out of them. And so we've got two bananas, essentially frozen bananas, and then this chocolate peanut butter oat milk mixture, which just looks super luscious. So I'm super excited already about it. And uh, and then we're going to be just scraping it out here. So I know you can't see me, Kim. Lid's going on, and it's going to be loud, but I want you to watch the action so you all can see how the texture changes. So you can hear it got quieter, but it looks like I have to stop it and um, actually scrape it down the sides. That happens sometimes, Kim, where you have to stop and scrape it? Absolutely. Yeah. Also, I would say, depending on how big your bananas are or the conditions of um, that you have, how warm your kitchen is, if it's really soft, um, like I say in the book, you can also freeze it to firm it back up, okay. and then it'll make it more scoopable. If you want to eat it like a soft serve, it can be the, the softness can vary. that's just refusing to be mixed in but I'm I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with it where it is because it looks really yummy and I want to go ahead and taste so I'm gonna scoop some out and then uh, I'll look how pretty and scoopable that is yum I'm gonna bring it over to show you guys too so this is essentially well Realistically, this is a serving for me, but maybe Microwave Boy, if he's very, very nice to me, will get a little taste of it. Um, but look at that beautiful texture. I'm gonna bring out, there's, there's chocolate all over the counter, which is hilarious, but um, let's see. Just see that gorgeous texture. It's super creamy looking. I'll show you. Oh, it turned out so nice. Yeah, I mean, I would have probably, you know, smoothed it out a little bit. Uh, and I'm just gonna pour a tiny bit of this. I don't wanna melt it too much. I'll bring it over and show you, but I'm going to just pour a little bit of this caramel sauce. Oh my, that just looks beautiful. Okay, look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty caramel sauce. Yum, and you can see it is starting to thicken up how it's dripping off the spoon. So that's what you want caramel to be doing. All right, let's, let's dig in here. Yum, yum. I'm very excited. Mmm. Wow. That's fantastic. Oh, um, good. oh yeah it's so good um so the caramel sauce is really caramely and rich and definitely thickening up it would be so good on vanilla and ice cream as well um and then and the, the nice cream has is just the perfect blend of the chocolate the peanut butter it has that just that richness and you can taste the banana but it's not super strong so it really is more of a chocolate peanut butter situation Mm, great texture. Okay, so thank you so much, Kim. This was awesome. Um, you'll find the link to buying her books book in the comments, and you can also check out Kim's five other books because, as we mentioned, she's a prolific cookbook author. You can also find Kim on welcomingkitchen.com, 
Look for the Oat Milk Cookbook wherever books are sold. You can buy it online. You can buy it from your favorite independent bookstore, which everybody really appreciates. You can follow me, S. Weaver MPH. And if you know anyone who you think would enjoy this book, um, is eating plant-based or is dairy sensitive, please do share this video with them because it really helps spread the word about these uh, more independent books that don't have big, huge marketing budgets behind them, which is part of what we're doing here at the Blue Nail Kitchen. So Kim, thank you so much for being here. It's really good to see you even though it was digitally, and I wanna thank you all for being here. Bye everyone. Bye, thank you so much, Stephanie.